You know it's gonna be a spicy video when we're talking about banning players and reverting rewards that players should not have gotten. In this video, we're gonna review the note that Paula, the community manager, shared about the bans and the reverted loot and how these bugs even happened in the first place. So we'll go step by step, and if this is the kind of thing you like, subscribe to the channel. I actually used to work at tech startups, and I, for a time, was a VP tech, then shifted to be a VP of product management. So I actually have a lot of experience with this sort of stuff, and I am more empathetic than most people might be because like I've been in the situation where there's a problem and it's like I feel your pain but at the same time maybe I can explain a little bit behind the scenes what might have happened that these bugs even are happening at all so let's talk about bugs says Paula for context we had three issues in squad busters last week sorry for the trouble the first bug occurred Wednesday the 21st players in squad league could repeatedly trigger Free daily freebies to reappear in the shop after closing and reopening the game. Each restart provided two to three random babies, and the issue was active for about two hours before we fixed it with maintenance. So with maintenance means they had to do a code update, and this also means that it was server side, so they could have changed this like any time. It's not the code that's in the client potentially. Um, you know, that's the uh, phone that you're using. It's on their server side code. Here's a look at the impact. So before we talk about the impact, I will say this. Having worked in software development, the way that you would prevent this moving forward is that you have a list of things that get tested every time you roll out new code. And ideally, you automate those tests, so you don't even have to think about it anymore. Your test automation suite does all this for you, okay? So this is something that should never happen again. Um, and essentially, the test would check, like, hey, when you close the game and reopen it, does the shop refresh the free rewards, yes or no? But the impact is as follows. 0.9% of our total active players use this bug to refresh the shop at least 10 times. Bro, 10 times you know you're cheating. You do know you're cheating. You 10 times you know you're a cheater, all right? But 0.9%, almost 1% though, like one in a hundred players of the game cheated. Hey, man, at least 10 times. But only 0.073% of our total active players did it at least 200 times. Now, if you've done this 200 times, you big cheating. You're a big fat cheater and you know it. And 0.0129% of our total active players did this at least 500 times, bro. Okay, and then less than 0.01% actually got an ultra because of the exploit. Cheaters be cheating, all right? Um, I'm the one weaving in all this language about cheaters, by the way, Paula didn't say cheaters. Um, although this bug may not be significantly impacting the overall game balance, players who exploited it repeatedly did gain a progression advantage. True, right? They got extra stuff. That's why bans ranging from seven to 31 days were applied depending on the extent of the exploitation. The more a player exploited the bug, the longer their ban and the pause on their progress. I will say 31 days is an extremely long ban. Um, and, and yes, it is an exploit. Like the player was exploiting, they knew they were exploiting. You're a cheater, get out of my game, is what the developers are basically saying. I think a more elegant solution would be to have reverted the progress and use smaller bans for everybody. They say, why not revert the accounts and remove the claimed babies? The unit of progress here being babies is just outrageous. Unfortunately, this is a technical limitation we have. I'll translate that in a second. And removing progress is more complicated than it might look. So what that means is that they do not have a detailed enough record of where the babies came from when you add units into your account. That's what it, I think, means here. Because with a sufficiently sophisticated database, you would know that a player got X babies from Y source at this date and time. And like, I don't know if the concern here is that it just adds dramatically to the data costs to be storing all that information or why they aren't storage, uh, storing it. But if it's a technical limitation, I think it's just they didn't actually keep a record of those things. I don't think it would be so complicated if they had the record to be able to check the record and then revert specifically the things that the got like the cheaters got from cheating right i like i actually don't think that would be that difficult so this is me going through the data as i write this message and there's this funny meme um so 
you know, my, my take on this one is, is probably twofold. One is they assuredly leave with more test cases as a development team. And the other is they maybe leave with the takeaway that they need to track more data about what players are getting so they can do more sophisticated um, clawbacks if they have to in the future. At the same time, I mean, it'd be nice to hope that you don't have this problem in the future, but I also think it's a safety net to assume that you will and then be able to claw the stuff back. I think shorter bans with clawbacks would be better, like personally, um, than like a 31 day ban. When you're ba we, A 31 day ban is basically like, quit my game, sucker. Quit my game, just quit, right? And I, and I mean that respectfully, like 31 days. If you can't play the game for 31 days, like you probably go make a new account, right? But do you actually genuinely take up the game again in 31 days? I'm not so sure, like I, I genuinely am not. But this is not the only bug, by the way. There were a second and a third issue that happened. So unrelated to the above, um, and the, so this is unrelated to the prior issue, and happened on Thursday and Friday. The rewards for the first milestones of the emote party event could be claimed 100 times instead of just once. These offers were available for approximately 10 minutes. I have a lot of thoughts on this. We'll get to the, the technical piece in just a minute. Less than 1% of players claimed the random emote at least 50 times. Less than 3% of players claimed the 300 style tickets at least 50 times. Oh my God. It was definitely harder to assess whether this was a bug and there won't be any account suspensions related to it. Yeah, I don't think it's a, a player issue. Like they were offered 100 times to claim the style tickets. They were offered, like it said one, you know, X out of 100 times remaining to claim it. That's not the player's fault. They're not exploiting. They were given that. The developers quite literally gave that and the players claimed it. So to, so like, yeah, players probably could figure out they shouldn't be doing it, but they were quite literally offered it in the store. And that's an erroneous offer, but it was an offer not, I would argue, an exploit. Um, so instead, the extra style tickets players received because of this issue will be deducted with some cases exceeding 25,000 style tickets. Oh my God. For players who spent part on those tickets, a negative balance will be displayed Oh, oh, spent part of those tickets. Yeah, yeah. So if you spent some of those tickets and now they're deducted, you will have a negative balance of tickets until you earn enough to bring the balance back to zero. It is what it is. Due to technical limitations, we can't remove the extra emotes without risking the loss of emotes gained prior to the bug, e.g. exclusive emotes. So no action will be taken in this case. This is another instance where I wonder, like if it's technical limitations, are they just not storing this information in the database? because I feel like there doesn't need to be a technical limitation here, but I also feel like, I don't know, do, you re do they feel like they really need to be tracking this level of data for how emotes are obtained? Like I understand why they would feel like they wouldn't necessarily need to do that. Apologize for the issues and any confusion this might've caused. I'm here to answer any questions or concerns you may still have. I think this is an extremely well-written response to what happened. It is extremely well written for several reasons. First of all, they say what happened. They say why it is that they chose the course of action they chose as a remedy. They talked about the timeline in which these remedies happened. They also talked about why it is they, they couldn't do other things that they might have considered doing. Like, I think this is actually an extremely sophisticated response. And I also think this, for me as a technologist, raises a couple questions around how it is that offers in the shop are created. I wonder if they have to tap a developer to create offers every time they want an offer. So an offer is custom coded every time it shows up. Or if they have some sort of console, which I think would be the case, like a website, where they can go in and as a team create offers and then they show up. And depending on which way this is, like either your QA team needs to be checking these offers before they go live, or it is your team that is creating the offers that needs to do like a better job sanitizing the offers they've made to like make sure that when they make them they're correct. Or there was a bug with the tool they have to create offers. Like any of those things could be true. I guess we don't really need to speculate on which one it is, but like the crazy part is that the second issue and third issue were back to back, which is like so painful. So, so like, I mean, look, if I'm in charge of technology and we have an issue in production and then the very next day we have the exact same issue, like I am gutted. How can we make that mistake twice? I'm sure they're licking their wounds there and circling the wagons on like, okay, so like how do we make sure that doesn't happen again? Because very obviously 
They're not trying to offer something a hundred times. I almost even wonder why they can even create an offer at all that can be given a hundred times. Like, why? why? Why can anyone create that offer that is available to claim a hundred times? What, what, what even is there? I guess there was one point where you could buy a bundle. This was for Bandit. And you could do that a hundred times. That was a thing, right? Wasn't that a thing? I actually much, 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 much prefer the ability to obtain units like we got for the Bandit than how we've had to do for the Miner and Leon and the Archer, where you have to just refresh the shop. It's so painful, man. As a spender, it is like the least fun way to obtain units of all the ways to obtain them in the game, in my opinion. Um, it just doesn't feel like value. Just like shredding your coins on refreshes in order to rush max a unit. I feel like, whatever, that's the price of being first, I suppose. So if you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here, consider subscribing. Like I said, I think this response is very sophisticated and, and really well written. Um, should these things have happened? I mean, obviously not. And even Supercell would, I'm sure, say like, yeah, these are obviously mistakes and we would love to have, have not had these happen. But I, I think this response is really exceptional, actually. And I think this level of explanation is really exceptional. Um, and I think the choices they've made for what to do make sense. I think that the bans are really aggressive. But I also feel like Supercell making a statement that's like, don't cheat, bro. <laughs> I was going to use a harsher word than bro, but like to, for them to make the statement, don't cheat, bro, is super reasonable. It is. And, and for them to say like 31 days basically says, you know, you're a cheater. We know you're a cheater. Get out of my game and don't do it again. And I, I don't blame them for doing that. Like, it's aggressive. I feel like if they had the, like I said earlier, the option to do something more sophisticated, it would have been a, a stronger, um, more effective kind of response without driving those players to potentially want to quit. But at the same time, like, get out cheaters is also extremely <laughs> reasonable. But all that said, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. It's been a crazy time. I'm actually just now back from Gamescom. Uh, I was there for, uh, well, in Germany for about four days for, in Cologne, Germany. And I actually have been to Cologne, Germany before for a Rise of Kingdoms meetup. Uh, the videos about Gamescom and my being there and like why I was there at all will be on my second channel. I was genuinely hoping to meet some Supercell folks there, but it didn't happen, unfortunately. I did get to see some um, Clash Royale. Like there was a big tournament for it. I saw that on kind of a, a big stage. It was really cool, but... I didn't really see anyone I recognized from the Supercell team to bump into them, and it was like, bro, it was so crowded at this event. It was kind of insane. If you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here, consider subscribing. If you want to see my last vid, where at Gamescom, I upgraded a unit to the Ultra Tier of a card in the end screen, and there's one more unit I actually upgraded to the Ultra Tier. That video is coming tomorrow. So subscribe so you don't miss it. Until next time, have fun smashing your enemies. I'll see you in the next one, everybody.